Here in the heart of Fort Worth is the newly revamped Sundance Square Plaza. I've been here many times and the square is named after the legendary Sundance Kid. 150 years ago, this was a popular stopping place for cowboys taking their cattle to Kansas on the Chisholm Trail, which is depicted on the mural behind me overlooking the plaza. Yes, we are a cow town for sure and proud of it. I know this might be hard to believe, but not long ago, this was just a parking lot that you paid to park your car to visit local places around downtown Fort Worth. The city leaders wanted to build something here that would make the city proud and attract new business. It took 18 months to rebuild this Sundance Square with 216 jet water fountains and four 32-foot tall umbrellas with red LED lights and the versatility to stage whatever theme you want in this area. They now showcase events, concerts, movies, and live performances that go on all the time. I brought two of my grandkids here during the Christmas holidays, and it was decked out like a winter wonderland. They loved it. We're standing here under the awnings of the Bird Cafe, which overlooks this square. The chef here is celebrity chef David McMillan. David builds great restaurants, and if you ever come to Sundance Square, you should try it out. I've gone to his restaurants for many years, and We've even done a Mediterranean cruise together, so I know what I'm talking about. He has some amazing things on the menu here. One of the attractions here close to Sundance Square is Bass Hall. It opened in May of 1998. It was built with private funds. And no matter when I drive through downtown, the angels on the corners of the Bass Hall are inspiring to me. There are two of them and they are 48 feet tall. Talk about a building. Here at Sundance Square, they recently hosted the ESPN Final Four coverage right here from the plaza. I'm sure you've heard the saying from a famous movie, if you build it, they will come. They found this to be true here in Sundance Square. Keeping the city built up by adding new and exciting features is a big task, but Fort Worth has done a great job in creating a lively atmosphere for the people here. Keeping your team built up is a major job as well. Having clear goals as to what you want your team to be and accomplish takes lots of planning and hard work. Your team does not get built on its own. You have to build it. You need to release the leader in you to build a quality team. There are several key parts to being an effective builder. First, you have to have a plan. The saying is true. If you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Decide what you want, then formulate a plan to accomplish it. Design the future of your team so you know where to go and what you will need to achieve your goal. The plan has to be written with key details in place. Many times you start with the outcome and you build a plan backwards to be able to get to the end results. Not only do you have to get where you want, but you have to have the systems in place to maintain the final goal that you want to accomplish. Second, you have to build the foundation. Everything rests upon the strong foundation you build. If you start wrong, then nothing will line up. Weak foundations can cause there to be shifting and cracking later when the pressure is on. You need to pay attention when something is not right and investigate to find out why. So spend some time building strong relationships with your team so that you make sure all the things are lining up together. It'll save you so much time and stress. Third, you need to have structure. The structure will give you clear parameters and guidelines with checks and balances for everyone. No one should be building on their own. Keep the whole team on focus for what you are trying to build and stay on task instead of wasting time and resources. Our favorite house that we built was a six bedroom, four bath home on a corner lot and those bedrooms sure came in handy with all the international visitors that we hosted throughout the years. We had built before, but I had forgotten all of the decisions you have to make to put your personality on it. First, we had to choose a floor plan, and there were several options we could pick from. Being a corner lot, we had the garage face the side street, making the front of the home more appealing. Then, we took the piece that could have been an extra garage space and made it a guest bedroom with its own bath. We picked the outside brick color, the trim color, the inside paint and carpet, the kitchen cabinets, appliances, faucets, and so on. And when it was finished, we were so excited because we'd been commuting one hour each way daily to the ministry we worked for. The new home was just 15 minutes down the road. Life became so much easier. 
I sure miss that house and all the guests that came to visit us. We learned that there is a price to pay when you are building. Most people use a builder to build a house because their job is to coordinate together all of the workers, the cement trucks, the plumbers, the electricians, the cabinet people, carpet layers, lighting fixtures, and other construction. Anyone who has ever built anything will tell you that you have to have finances to build, which means you have to have a budget. Having strong communication keeps you sane during the building process. Hopefully, when you are done, it will make the whole process seem worth it. When you are building people together as a team, you encounter the same kinds of challenges of bringing everyone together to accomplish and build towards the same goal. Another way that leaders build their team is by enhancing their gifts, which means you show value to what they do. If a team member feels celebrated, they will go the extra mile with you and do more than you can imagine. My son Ryan is a drummer. He had always had extra rhythm and could keep the beat, could hardly sit still. And throughout the years, we bought drum sets, electric drums, cymbals, drum thrones, and all the things to make great drum kits. He took lessons from Mike Kennard, one of the former drummers of the Imperials. For Ryan, playing drums is like riding a bicycle. Once you learn how, you always know how, and it comes back to you. He's still one of my favorite drummers because he plays with such passion. We built our worship teams with people just like Ryan, passionate musicians. Whatever kind of team you are constructing, have a good plan to build, lay a strong foundation, and utilize the people resources you have to create something really amazing that everyone can enjoy. Spencer and Cindy Nordyke, reaching nations and generations. For more information, visit nordikeministries.com.